Attention, please. And now, it's Cutter's Rock Rockcast. Dude, thank you so much for taking a couple minutes, man. This. I appreciate it. I know we had this scheduled uh, last week, and let me just say, uh, I'll probably never, ever use the world of Skype ever again. Um, so- I had big problems with it, too. I mean, suddenly my account was not there, and everything just, it was a mess. Yeah, I had the exact same issue. I had to go back with somebody who, who works for your management company, and her and I were sitting there back and forth, I swear, for like half an hour trying to make sure we're logged in. Oh, and now i got to re-log in. Now i got to do this captcha. Now i got to do this captcha again. Anyway, never mind. Uh, I'm glad we were able to, yeah. uh, to make this work. Uh, so, Casper... Good old school phone is, uh, <laughs> is uh, trustworthy. <laughs> exactly. That is the one thing, right? As old school as it is, yeah. even though it's cell phone here, but... Uh, it is always there, and it will never, never leave you, uh, at least for the most part, as long okay. as you can get reception. Um, you're uh, you're in Denmark right now, right? You guys are hanging tight there. Yeah. Uh, I'm home. I, good. You're isolated at home. How how is that? A- as as a creative person, how has it been for you to be uh, sitting at home with you know not a whole lot to uh, not a whole lot of places to go? Well. Um, fortunately, we are opening up a little bit oh, right good. here in Denmark. So actually, my kids are in kindergarten and daycare, and my wife just starts work again. So I am able to to be a little bit creative. But, I mean, we were supposed to be on tour in the U.S. right now. Mm-hmm. That's not happening. That's, that's I'm really bummed out about that. But... Um, we are actually writing music, new music right now. Excellent. I mean, that's what we can do. Yeah. Well, that, yeah, that's the just... only thing we can do right now. Exactly. I, I said this to somebody else in a previous interview, but I'm like, you know, the end of the year, 2021 is going to see a lot of random new releases from bands that we didn't expect, I think. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> every band out there is, is, is doing writing music right now. Mm-hmm. That would be a ton of breakups next year yeah exactly maybe even maybe even in in the the later part of this year i don't know well it's not like there's a not only are you stuck at home with nothing else to do but it's not like there's a lack of inspiration right now oh yeah i mean there really is all the the anxiety and the the fear of the future and all that Mm -hmm. i mean the the next i think the next Volbeat album will be quite different from from the previous two or three records. I mean, it's very up tempo and very, uh, I mean, a little bit more aggressive. Okay. So, yeah, we are we are having a lot of inspiration right now from the world. No doubt. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Casper. You you had started out in the death metal world. Am I right? Yeah, um, I started out. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I started out in the I mean, mid '90s. I was playing in a melodic death metal band called Withering Surface, and that's actually where I met Michael. He was he was in a, a brutal, nah, yeah, a death metal band called Dominus <laughs> in the same area where I lived. It was such a so, that area is such a good scene for that kind of music, man. It really is. One of my favorite bands, obviously, from the uh, northern European world. Um, yeah. To to go from... to Okay, Volbeat is obviously not that. And, and Volbeat has been able to solidify themselves as really one of the uh, world's best rock bands. And I'm, I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say that. Uh but but it is rock and roll. There's a rockabilly element to it. There's a classic rock element to it. There's obviously still some metal elements to it. Um, yeah. to, was it a big, was it a weird transformation to, obviously you joined, joined what, 2016, if I'm remembering right? Um, yeah, that was, yeah. Was it but a big, kind of, go ahead. I've been on the side of the band since, since uh, the formation, actually. I was, I joined the band for a, uh, brief moment in 2006 okay. when I was doing um, a, a European tour with them like just for uh, like a stand-in mm. um, so I, I kind of I was there for the 
some of the very first shows, and it was different. I mean, I remember when I heard when I heard the first demo, the first time I thought, "What the fuck is that?" <laughs> I mean, that is not. That's not kind of. It was metal, but it was not really. Yeah, it was. It was different, but it was cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody kind of liked it. So, and I knew that Michael has been listening to all kinds of music all the time. I mean, not just death metal. Right. But also rockabilly and punk rock and, you know, all kinds of music. And still do. Well, it's, it seems obvious now. I mean, right? The influences of all that are... are within every album of Volbeat, you know, as you continue to go. Um, was it a weird transformation, though, for you personally, as a bass player, to go from playing, you know, melodic death metal or hardcore or whatever to the more rock and roll style? And that was a big difference. I mean, I was used to play riff based, you know, just basically mm -hmm. just follow, follow the, the guitar lines. And then suddenly we were doing kind of these big choruses just with a, you know, just three or four chords. And you have to do something interesting with that. Mm -hmm. But not, luckily for me, I, I, uh, we have Rob in the band. And he was, in, in the beginning, really, we were working on the new, the bass lines for the, the new album, uh, for the, Rewind album, right? And uh, and he was really really good to to work with me, so I kind of got to, got into what would, would be cool to play here, not just follow the riff, but you know, do a little lick there and do some melodic bass lines. So that was great having having him in, in the band because we were working with demos for most of the songs. Mm -hmm. We did that. In his uh, in his hotel room, actually. So, so that was that was very that was that was a smooth transition. I think Rob is um, Rob has such an incredible ear. Obviously, I mean, I've known that guy for a very long time, from producer work to his work in Anthrax, and obviously now to Volby. Um, Having a guy like yeah. that with having a guy like that within the band, especially for the songwriting process, now that you were involved uh, for the first time on this record, what what what's that like for you? How much of a help is that having that kind of ear in your band, not just sitting behind the console? Um, that that's that's a tremendous help. I mean, and and uh, the sound wouldn't be the same without without Rob. That's for sure. I mean. He adds all those, all those harmonies, and then he comes up with some of the some of the major riffs. Um, mm -hmm. And well, for me, I've learned personally. I've learned a lot since I joined the band. I mean, it's late for me to be uh, learning a lot of new stuff, but that that was definitely a game changer for me. Of course, it was uh, touring and all that, but music-wise, it was a big, um, big difference for me to get to know, to get to know Rob. How much? I, he, he's, he's, yeah. So. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I know. I know. There's a, a little bit of delay. Obviously, cross Atlantic is, yeah. <laughs> phone calls. Um, <laughs> I was just going to say, for, for Rewind, Replay, Rebound specifically, being that this was your first album playing bass on it, uh, how involved were you mm -hmm. personally within the songwriting process? Well, usually it is like Michael is coming up with a few riffs or maybe a whole song, and then we work on it, all, all of us, in the rehearsing room. I okay. mean, putting it all together and maybe some of the arrangements and you know, coming up with ideas and everybody is listening to everybody. So, but basically, I mean, the raw skeleton of the song is is mostly done when 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 uh, <clears throat> when Michael comes to the <clears throat> to the writing room with a new song. Given how quickly Volbeat so tends to release albums, is he the kind of guy who's got a riff every day? 
Like he just he just strikes me as the kind of guy. Like, oh yeah, here's another riff. Here's another riff. Here's another riff. When we are in the process of writing a new album, I mean, he is very on fire. I mean, right now, for instance, he he is on fire and he's coming up with riffs like, I mean, it's crazy. But when we're done with the recording of an album, he he's he's not writing anything. Okay. I mean, we can do a little bit backstage or maybe during a, a sound check or something, but it's, you know, when it's like like a different mood he's going into, and then, ah, a lot of stuff is coming out. I mean, right now, it's, it's, it's uh, crazy. Well, like we said at the beginning, you know, there's no lack of inspiration in the world for songwriting right now. I don't think there's any doubt about that. No, no, no. Um, this, you mentioned the tour that you were supposed to be on earlier, uh, right now. I, I gotta tell you, man, last week was going to be such a great week for live music for me personally, because there was going to be a Volbeat Clutch Pitcher Book show. There was going to be a Foo Fighters show. My own band had a gig. That was all on the same weekend. Um, and wow. obviously we're all stuck at home in our basements now. At least that's where I am. Uh, that yeah. tour of Volbeat Clutch Picture Books seemed like such the perfect lineup um, and, and for anybody who's listening who doesn't know the band The Pitcher Books, I'm a motorcycler, so I came across this band quite a few years ago, uh, these two guys. And, and, yeah. and I, I, got, I was looking, I've never seen them, so to be able to see them with Volbeat and Clutch, who are my all-time favorite band, I, I was in seventh heaven, man. And then obviously for that not to happen stinks. Is it, are there plans to take that package and try to rebook it for next year? Um... There was also the talk about uh, rescheduling the whole tour for the for the fall. Okay. But I don't think those plans are not around anymore because we don't know when we are able to fly to the U.S. Right. We don't know what the situation will be. But I I do I count on that it will be going on next year. Okay. But I can't be 100 percent because everything is so uncertain right now. So nobody knows what's what's going on, but the plan is to do it the exact same tour next next year. The in limbo process of this entire thing is enough to drive you insane. I I, I mean it is for us. I can only imagine what it's like uh, for you guys not to know if you can go to or not to know if you can go play a show and when and how and how many people are going to allow to be there. And, you know, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. We had such a great great season lined up I mm-hmm. mean, great festivals here in Europe and a, a tour in, in the US and some some nice stuff going on and then suddenly nothing I mean well even to think about I mean we're we're, we're, we're in, in Denmark for the whole year we're in May now. I mean, even to think about the fact that the festivals in the United States in May that always happen aren't happening. The festivals, then you get into the festival season in Europe. None of those are happening. The festivals in the fall are all up in limbo. A couple of them have already been canceled. Um, our own festival, right now we're on a schedule, but, and that's Rock USA, which you guys have played, but, it, you know, who knows if that's going to happen or not. Um, it's, it's so crazy to think about the fact that tours are one thing, but those institutions that have been built over years and years, decades even in a lot of situations, just flat out are gone. They're not happening, and it's insane. It's just such a weird uh, yeah, thing to think I mean, about. The economic situation for, for all those festivals, I don't know. I don't know what, what that means. I mean, hopefully they have some sort of insurance so they can. Right. I mean, so they can go on next year. And I, I know some some festivals here in. In Denmark, they they were sold out in advance, but mm-hmm. they they offered the the opportunity for the ticket holder to keep the ticket for next year because that would be a tremendous help for the festival. So they don't have to they didn't have to pay all those tickets back. Right. And a lot of people <clears throat> have uh, kept on to their tickets so they can use them next year. Now that's a big big uh, financial help. For the for the for the festivals, I don't know if, if, if festivals in, in the U.S. are doing, you know, the same thing. Yeah, there's been a few different um, 
options. I, I know Danny Wimmer Presents has had a couple of different things. Obviously now, though, they, they only have one festival left on the books, and I don't even know if that's going to happen at this point. So, When is that? Uh, that's the one in October in California. Um, October, oh, that's... And that's uh that's that's uh aftershock metallica and my chemical romance are the two headliners um oh which is and that's just like this year of all years man metallica is supposed to play all these festivals in the united states and headline all of them exclusively and then they all get canceled damn it <laughs> <laughs> obviously you guys have yeah, spent some time with metallica, to play with metallica for time this year. yeah not gonna happen nope nope but i mean we just have to to look to look forward and, yep. uh, and hope hope for the best because I mean this year is is done. Mm-hmm. Yep. So exactly. Just gonna stay inside. Just gonna stay home. Do what you right. got to do. Get healthy and make sure this pandemic goes away and never comes back. And that's really exactly. It's at I'm this point that's what we got to do. For a, for a vaccine, that's what I think gonna gonna help us all. Right. Well, in in our world especially, Casper, I think in the world of concerts, um, in music and live music. If you don't have, I don't, I don't see how it can realistically happen without a vaccine. Uh, testing is one thing, but without a vaccine, how are you going to put fifteen thousand people in an arena packed in? Um, exactly. When there's a good chance a hundred of them exactly. are going to go and home and be sick. Everybody would be, yeah. Everybody would be scared to be among so many people. Mm-hmm. So I mean, we need it, and we need it right now. Yep. But I know that. I mean, scientists all over the world, they are kind of close to a vaccine. Sounds so, like it. I, I'm kind of... Fingers crossed, that, man. That it will happen. Fing- exactly. Fingers crossed. Well, I'm glad to hear you guys are doing good and, and uh, that you guys are working on some new music. And I'm glad, obviously, your family uh, seems to be doing okay. It looks like we in the States have a little bit more time of uh, enclosure before we're going to be able to open up a bunch of things. But it sounds good like that, that Denmark yeah, I mean, is doing it, that. It came later to the U.S. That, than here in Europe. So. Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. Um, it, it did, so, yeah. The, the, the country of Denmark is uh, a funny one for my world, personally, and I'm going to say this before I let you go, uh, because, so I'm, I'm in Wisconsin, and in Wisconsin, we yeah. always joke around, you could take a whole tour of Europe in the state of Wisconsin if you just imagine they're all small towns mm-hmm. instead of countries. Um <laughs> So I actually uh, grew up in a town of 1,200 people, farming community, called yeah. Denmark. Um, really? Yes. With a sign in the, <laughs> at the front of the town. Like, basically, you get off the interstate, right? And then there's the town, and there's a sign that says, Welcome into Denmark, um, which is really funny. Apparently, there was a big Danish settlement here at some point. Um, oh, okay. So, uh, so <laughs> just, just seeing the word Denmark is still like, ah... Okay, well, let me let me relive my roots here for a second before I realize we're talking about the country, not the town. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, well, I you can definitely hear on, on my accent that that I'm not from the U.S. No, exactly, exactly. Uh, all right, man. I, again, I I truly, truly appreciate you taking a few minutes uh, of time to to okay. chat about music and to chat about the world and of course the, the latest record, Rewind, Replay, Rebound. The latest single, by the way, is Leviathan. Um, there is an official bootleg video out for that now. Go check it out. It's very, very cool. Uh, I know this was one of the, the first tracks released publicly from the album, but it is a cool song, and I'm glad you guys decided to release it to radio so that we get a chance to play it, too. Really, really glad you like it. I mean, it's one of my favorites of, of the album. I'm really into that that Thin Lizzy kind of vibe. Yeah. You know, and the, and the main riff. Actually, Rock came up with that. Okay. It's cool. That's a cool riff, though. It really is. It's a cool song. Yeah, it is. Well, thank you. <laughs> You're very Thanks. welcome. You're very welcome. Uh, Casper from Volbeat. Seriously, thank you. No, thank you. It's very nice talking to people. I mean, I haven't talked to a lot of people in a long time, so <laughs> you welcome. Absolutely. Carter's Rockcast. Don't forget to tune in. Exactly. 